Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Book Workshop. Now, I'm in the process of making a stool, or it could be described as a small table. It's to go outside, and I've made, made it out of oak. Uh, and ordinarily, in my videos, I would show you the finished item at the very beginning, and then take you through it. But I'm going to borrow a piece of kit, and it hasn't arrived yet, in order to finish the top. And I'm also going to uh, finish the whole thing with some Osmo. So that will be a separate video. But for now, I'm going to show you how I went about making the actual uh, base, as it were. Now, I've used oak for this because I've had quite a few bits left over from various projects. And a lot of it came from the skip at one of the wood yards I used to use because it had such deep splits in it. But shorter pieces uh, were quite OK. And so I've used those here. Now I've blinged this up a bit and I've put this uh, little motif in the middle here and I've put a little design on each of the ends. Obviously you don't need to do that. And I'll also show you that if you're using screws instead of dominoes, how those screws that would otherwise show can be disguised or actually made a feature of, as I've done here with this piece of walnut which is forming a plug under which there's a screw. So. Let's have a look how I went about making this. There will be a second video coming out in due course. Right, these various pieces at the uh, bottom here and at the top, uh, I've cut them out using the bandsaw to provide this rather nice curve. And I started by making this little template, as you can see just here. So once I'd made the template, I was then able to use this to mark all my pieces and then take these to the bandsaw and cut them out. After that, I took the cut pieces to my little bobbin sander, sanded them off, and that's what we have here now. And you can now see how these uh, sort of leg pieces, or whatever you want to call them, uh, will come together. They'll have a, a bottom foot, the actual uh, vertical piece here, and then this piece and there'll be the top that goes on. But I need to join these pieces together. And I'm going to use dominoes to do that and I'm going to use 10 millimeter dominoes 50 millimeters long. So I've got a markup for these. Now if you don't have a domino machine there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't uh, drill and screw these from the top because that won't be shown and similarly drill and screw these from below. Again, that won't be shown. So if you haven't got a domino machine, uh, do not despair. You can use some nice long screws. Now, marking up was pretty easy because uh, the domino machine is going to be having its uh, foot here and be cutting into here. And so all I've got to do is find the central positions for the two domino joints, which will match both ends of the joint. Now we want the domino joints to be central to this piece and uh, to these as well. Now this one is 60 millimeters across. So the height, as they call it with the domino, is uh, got to be 30 millimeters here. The depth going in that way is going to be 25. Now the domino 500 does go up to 30 millimeters for its maximum height. Now these here, the thickness here is 30 millimeters. So the, uh, the height, for this one is going to be 15 and depth will also be 25. And for the slots in either end of these leg pieces, uh, we again will want a depth of 25 millimeters, but the height is going to be 15 because this is 30. So I'm all set up now. I've, everything's marked. I've got my domino set for the 15 millimeter height and I've got a 25 millimeter depth and I'm going to do all, all four in this piece and then tackle the other one. Now for these pieces, again, it's a 15 millimeter height, still 25 millimeter depth, but I'm using two of these path hats. You make these yourself, by the way, so uh, you can't buy them, not at the moment anyway. And so I've got them set up here and all I'm doing is, just as before, I'm lining up. And there's the other one. Now, 
uh, the depth of cut here is quite close to this uh, 30 millimeter thickness here. So it's good practice never to put your fingers on the other side here, just in case. Now in order to do these, I've set the height here to 30. And there I now have all the dominoes done for the legs. Now when these uh, are all joined together uh, and we're about to put the top on, I want to have a piece across here which will keep the legs at the right distance apart, stop them from bowing outwards and so on. This is the piece that goes between the two legs just here. That's the top of it that goes immediately under the top and the legs will be here and here. And I want to put a, a nice curve here and I want it to be even. So what I've done is I've got my uh, large compass trammel arrangement thing which normally sits on this piece of steel. I've taken the two things off. This is the pin and that's the pencil. And I've measured the width of this. I've then lined it up so it's flush at the side of the bench there. I've scribed a line here which is half that width. So that means now wherever I put this uh, point here it's going to be exactly in the middle of the piece and so I can now position this at just the right place. I think there would do it nicely. Yep. So I'm happy with that. So I can now draw a nice curve and I can cut that out. Now I could either cut this out with a bandsaw or with a jigsaw. Now the easiest way is actually to use a bandsaw if, if you're lucky enough to own one. And as I've got one I'm going to use it. And what I've got to do is do my very best to make a really nice clean cut. And that's a, a really, really nice. I'm going to give that a light sand then I'm going to give it a little tweak on the router table. Right, I want to put a decorative chamfer on the all four edges, but I don't want it to go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. So what I've done on the router table, I've put a stop, one here and one here. So that means then when I move my piece along, it has to start here and end there. Remember, that's the direction of cut. Now, what I like to do is to actually start the cut uh, just a fraction short of that stop and then back it off slightly, very carefully, and then go forward till I meet that stop. I've checked uh, the depth of my chamfer cutter and it's just about right. Uh, actually, if I were to do this again, I would have moved these decorative pieces in just a, a tiny fraction, but it doesn't matter. Now, when I'm doing this, I want it to be the same all round, so I've got top marked here. I always had the top at that end. And the way I've set this up is that the gap at the bottom here will be slightly bigger than the gap at the top. So here I've got the same uh, chamfer cutter in the router table. I've actually got it the same height I was using it before. I've taken the fence off because this is curved, but remember this is a bearing guided cutter. And so I can run this along following the bearing. Now some of the dust is gonna come off this way. So I've used this second hose up here. There is one underneath as well. So do this very carefully. And remember we're pushing the work past the cutter. So that's that done. 
Now, in order for this centerpiece to be lined up properly, I've got the ability to put some dominoes in. You could use biscuits, or you could just use your own judgment and just put screws straight through, uh, hoping you'll get them spot on. So, in order to put dominoes in the right place, because the way this comes together, like so, I've got to make sure when I mark where my dominoes are going to go in this piece, that I allow for the thickness of this. That's 30 millimetres thick, and therefore the measurements I've made for the dominoes here and here need to be replicated here, but 30 less. So I've done that, and I'm going to start by putting the dominoes in the ends of these pieces. Now, I've put a 6 millimetre a domino cutter in here and this piece of wood is 19 millimeters thick so on this sight gauge at the edge here I've set that at nine and a half. My depth of cut is 20 millimeters because I'm using 40 millimeter dominoes. When it comes to doing the dominoes in here, because this is quite wide, far too wide to use the height adjustment on the machine, I'm going to have to tackle it vertically. The width of this is 108, so the middle is at 54. But when you use the domino vertically, this plate here is 10 millimeters away from the center of the cutter. So in order to do this vertical cut, I need to know where this should be. So I take away 10 millimetres away from 54, I end up with 44. And I'm drawing a line across here, 44 millimetres from that edge. What that now means is that if I line my base of the domino up with this line here, I know where the centre of the domino is because there's an etched line here. And I can get the two things lined up absolutely perfectly, like so and I can then do a plunge cut. And because that's offset by 10 millimeters, my plunge will be in the exact right position. Now, if you've not tried this before, you do need to practice it. The reason is that when you start the domino, you've got to make sure you're holding this face plate firmly in place on your work surface. And it does help to use a clamp just to keep the stock in one place eliminates one degree of movement after all. Now I'm going to do the same again. They will line up with these and that shows the allowance for that 30 millimeter piece at the end. So I'm going to do the sanding now and I'm using my ETS EC150 Oblique 3. Everybody always asks me what I use most. This is my go-to sand. I use it almost every time I want to do a sanding job. I've got 120 grit granite there and I'll finish off with 180. And I'm just going to take all these pieces one at a time. I've put this piece of stuff here. Uh, it's really um, because I've got bits of glue on the bench top and I don't want anything slightly rough underneath as I'm sanding. <laughs> And I've just switched to 180. It's now time to start the glue up, but just a word of warning, uh, because the joints at either end of the feet and the top bit are the same, be careful that you don't assemble this the wrong way up. Now, my top is at this end, and the bottom is there, so this is at the top. So I'm going to start with the tops and then we'll take it from there. It's always difficult when you're gluing to know just how much glue one should put in. And it's practice makes perfect. And after I don't know how many years, I still haven't perfected it yet, I still seem to use too much.
And that's the second one. I'll put that to dry as well. And then once this is completely dry, I can do the in-between piece. And it's, uh, I've put this end over here because I don't want any pressure on here to cause this to be damaged anyway. That's it, and I'll just leave that to dry. Now, I've deliberately designed this so that you don't need to have a domino machine. Uh, you don't need any very fancy tools at all. Okay, I needed the bandsaw to do these curved details here. I need the CNC to do this. But you don't need to do those bits. You could do something different. Also, for example, these joints here, I'd use dominoes there and there. You don't need to. You could screw in from the top and the bottom with no problem at all. And I've deliberately, even though I've dominoed this middle piece in here, I've deliberately left a place where I'm gonna put a screw just to demonstrate that it's no hardship putting a screw in. And with that screw in, I've already made up my little plug and I can now glue this in. Be careful when you lie this on its side in order to put something in that you remember that the edges of these legs are not flat with the, the bottom. Now I could have made these plugs out of the same material, out of some oak, but then getting the grain matched, a bit of a fiddle, so I thought, well, I'll make it out of contrasting wood. And in this case, I've used some walnut. And that goes in like so. That's that, and I'll just leave those to dry. And I'll clean those off later. And when the top goes on, it's going to be screwed. I've done a little counterbore here, and I've got a screw with a washer, which is going to go up through there. And you'll note that I've elongated these holes this way. And the reason for that is simple. When the top goes on, the grain is going this way, and the wood will naturally want to expand and contract as the moisture level changes this way. And so we've got to allow for that movement. And if we have a screw in an elongated hole like this, as that top moves, you can see there's plenty of movement here for this screw. And I can now just sand this down finally in a second or two. Now I'm just making up these little feet. They'll go under each of these uh, places like so, evenly all round, these little pads. And they've got this little detail here at the back, uh, which makes it just look a little bit nicer. And I'm going to round over the three edges uh, which protrude. Now I just thought I'd better show you how I went about making uh, these. It's actually terribly simple. I had two pieces of wood of the appropriate thickness, and I brought them together with a clamp and then I drilled a hole all the way through, and that then gave me uh, two pieces of wood initially, which I then cut into four, uh, all with the correct curve. Well, that's it for this video. In the next video, I will be doing the top and also uh, the actual finish of the whole thing. And I'm not sure how long that will take because I'm waiting to borrow uh, some kit in order to make a nice job of the top. Many thanks for watching. Take care, bye-bye.